understandable that we have different different business model in the railway understand or in the railway sector. What is really interesting that we have, for example, the Japanese with vertical integration, vertical separation like this with the UK, we have all this structure. But how to attract private investment in the railway sector is a key element and is really important to make understandable also for the who is managing, for example, for the government and so on. So my experience is coming with the World Bank or directly with a railway company. And uh, this is just an example with the whole this structure in Italy where we have the holding company from the state that manage FS, that manage an infrastructure from one side, the railway undertaking from the other side, and then you have a private operator on the high speed rail, for example, using the same network. We have a private rail freight operator using the same network. Of course, when you use the network, you will pay an access charge for that. So it's very important the regulation of access charge to be used. I know, for example, in, in Malaysia, they are thinking to open for the competition to new player on the same network. What is important to understand how to regulate that? The same in Thailand, there's a project that we made 2018 with the World Bank here for SRT for the government to separate the infrastructure from the railway undertaking to understand how we can manage other operators using the same network, could be for rail freight, for passenger, depending. But it's very important this kind of regulation. The example coming from Italy is really interesting because we have a private investor, okay, in the high-speed rail. The company was sold in 2018, so from Italian banks, gen, uh, from uh, insurance group, and so on. Private investor, for example, Montezemolo, that is still the president of the company, was the Ferrari president for 23 years. So he's an entrepreneur that is uh, also a manager that of the company. And then the company was sold for three million of US dollars to a, an infrastructure fund from US that is named GIP, that right now is the main holder, uh, shareholder, together with Allianz. So what we saw that we were able to attract private investment. And this is uh, some article from Bloomberg or, or Bloomberg Opinion that I helped to write. And what we saw that this kind of competition, this kind of uh, to attract private operator on the line was a good example all around the world. And we have several examples right now, not only in Italy, but also in Spain, for example, on the high-speed rail, but also in the rail freight sector, we have many operators on that. So it's really interesting that right now, globally, we start to see different uh, different business case that is interesting. So we were able to attract private investor. What we saw with the same network of high-speed line network in Italy, we doubled the demand, we decreased the average price of around 35, 40%, even if the economy in Italy was exactly at the same level. So finally, it's good for the rail sector. Another element is the frequency of the train. Right now, Milan to Rome, where we have to operate, we are around 160 connections per day. That means that in peak hour, we have a train every five minutes. If you compare with Madrid, Barcelona, right now in the competition, since 2021, we have around 90 connections. If we take London, Paris, we, that are very important city, much more than Milan to Rome. We have just 26 connections per day. New York, Washington DC, for example, they have just uh, 58, but just 20 with a sailor that is high speed rail, uh, or high speed train. So what is very important is the frequency. And the other element that is very important also here, when I try to advocacy with the different government, I'm meeting very often with the government, is the model shift. We were able, for example, Milan to Rome is 600 kilometers, so more than double, uh, quite the double of uh, poor Singapore, for example, the model shift for the rail passed from 36% to the 80%. And this is very, very important. And finally, one of the elements that was attractive for the railway undertaking to enter the market to make investment was the decrease of access charge. In Italy, the access charge decreased from 14.6 euro per train kilometer to 6.7 euro per train kilometer. I don't want to lose too much time because it's very short, but uh, there's uh, all the works that we, that we did on these topics that was a key element for the railway undertaking. And uh, in Spain, what we saw in 2021 is an entrance of a competition also in Madrid, Barcelona. So just a comparison, the market in the 2022, the, the third quarter to 2022, in comparison with 2019, the market increased more than 40% where we have competition on Sevilla, Madrid, where there was not still competition. The market decreased at the same time because of COVID and so on. But here we have a several, several, another example that is working quite well. I work also in Spain with the EO, that is a new entrant, and it's very interesting about this. So open access is an opportunity. 
We are speaking to have on the same network different operator. Open access could be an opportunity. Of course, it's one of the business model. It's not has to be uh, just for passenger or just for freight. You can decide as government what to do. It's a KPI, KPI, KPI driven process, of course. It's a learning by doing also for you know for the regulator. When we have a regulation that uh, could be different, I also working on a project in Tanzania, also there there's a regulator that has to fix the rules and also finally is able to attract private uh, private investor. Private investor, that is a key element, so economic regulation for, for a company that is a private is a key element because I have to know the conditions to use the network. I need to know exactly what is the economic, uh, you know, the economics of my business for the next years. And that's to be very clear. This morning we discussed with Sarah Chung from Asia Era one also about the regulation. It's very important for many years, especially when you have a concession. And what is needed is access charge that has to be developed and taken into consideration, for example, intermodal uh, competition that could be from aviation for passenger, could be from road for, uh, for freight, for example. And the regulation has to be what they call SSC, that is simple, stable, and clear. That is very, very important. How to make the access charge cost, how to calculate the access charge cost? So first of all, you have to know the numbers of the infrastructure manager. The a total municipal cost means what is the cost for the infrastructure manager to manage the infrastructure. Then how to recover that? Of course, a part of the cost is direct cost. So that is how much I consume using the network that is direct cost. Then we have a markup part. And then depending if the states want to make an intervention, they can put some state fund. That state fund could be zero, as we have, uh, for example, in some country, and state fund could be quite all the amount of the markup as in Sweden, for example. So we are close to the what we call marginal cost plus marginal cost model. And uh, just to try to go to the next one. Uh, it's not moving. Can you go to the next slide? Okay, thank you. So really quickly, so the direct cost is modulated by the wear, wear and tear. So how much I consume the network? The company, if it's a rail freight company, pay a different because the train has the mass of the train consume more the network. The speed is another element. So for example, high speed rail pay more because they consume more the network. And the ability to pay is related to the ability to pay of the different segments. And so what we have to take in consideration are several elements, but of course, the efficiency of the railway sector is important. Harmonization and standardization, we discussed this morning also about this. Fair condition, if we have competition, we need fair condition between all the operators. Innovation, of course, we discuss a lot about innovation to maintain the cost uh, or to be able to maintain the cost lower and to make the service much more better. And coordination between stakeholders. If you have completely different stakeholders, it's not easy. We discussed this morning with the Deutsche Bahn, for example. We have 500 operators on the same network. Of course, many of them is, uh, for example, just for the rail freight, but you need coordination between all of them. Then, what we saw, for example, in the rail freight, finally, in Italy, the market share in the rail freight market right now uh, of the new entrants is more than 50%. We are close to 60% in 2023 where the new entrants that are private company also enter in the market because the regulation is quite clear. And what is also interesting that right now, many of the players are private. So we were able to attract private investors. Just to give you some, some name and some numbers. The third operator in the rail freight market in Italy is owned by F2, uh, F2I, that is also owner of airports, of ports and so on, that make investment in GFA. Then the GTS, that is another player, that is the fourth player, 25% was sold to an inve European investment fund. And Medway, that is not just in Italy, but also in Spain and Portugal, Medway is a subsidiary of MSC, uh, so Mediterranean Shipping Company. So they were able to attract also this kind of investment. That, so the market is moving. They're moving quite fast. So with this, I finish with three minutes in advance because I know that it's very late. I want to thank you for the attention and thank you very much for the last people that are here in the meeting. And thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you very much. Thank you.